Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. My name is Josh Herman. Welcome to Archetype, the stream where we make characters based on archetypes from Carl Jung's archetypes. It's a lot of saying the same thing, but that's basically it. Like I said, I'm Josh Herman. I'm the host for the show. Uh, and we have been working on our fifth character in the series, which is the Ruler. So if you can't tell by the title, that's what we're working on, the Ruler. This is our third uh, episode working on that. I'm going to catch you up where we worked on last time, where we're at, and kind of what we're doing today in just a second. Uh, but in case you've never seen the stream, I'm going to quickly hop over to my portfolio and my Trello board, and I'll show you that in one moment. Uh, and that'll give you a, kind of a sense of who I am, what we're working on, and what we're going to continue doing. Uh, you should be able to hear some music if it is way too loud or there's anything. Seems like it is a little too loud. Um, anything wrong with the stream, please let me know, and I'm happy to adjust, happy to answer questions. Just generally happy to chat with you all today. See a couple people joining the stream today. Hi, hope you're all doing well. Uh, good to see you. Um, all right, so this is my portfolio, and you can see kind of here in the top left a couple of the archetype series that we've been continuing on. So, again, like I said at the top, this is our fifth character. Uh, and again, one kind of get, get this out of the way. Um, this stream is sponsored by Lenovo. So thank you to Lenovo for sponsoring the stream. Uh, this, this and many of our other streaming shows, Voice in the Hollow, Creature Corner, and our uh, Lenovo stage events are all sponsored by them. So thank you to Lenovo for sponsoring these streams. Now, this is, like I said, the one we're working on now is the fifth character. Uh, so we previously worked on this one. This was rendered in Marmoset Toolbag. This was rendered in... Uh, Unreal Engine 5, and the next three will also be in, in Unreal 5 too. So, Unreal 5, and then Unreal 5, and these are all the ones that we've been working on. Um, and today what we're working on is the Ruler. The Ruler, uh, this is where we got to uh, a couple streams ago. There's actually two streams ago, I think. Oh, no, last stream. This is where we got to the character. So we've been sculpting the character from scratch. Uh, we did use a head bust as a base point, so we didn't sculpt too much beyond what we see here but creating the costume and the environment you know all this kind of stuff uh, I didn't really do the back but creating the costume for the character and then beginning to set up an environment for what the character could look like now this is not intended to be the the environment that the character will live in meaning there's this is more of a proxy for an understanding of what it could look like so at the end of the last stream what we ended up doing was exporting what we have here putting it in Unreal Engine and then being able to start blocking out some lighting and exploration there. Uh, and we're going to do, uh, I'm going to show you that right now, which is where we're up to. I did spend a little bit of time off stream, not a ton, only about in 45 minutes, an hour uh, before the stream this morning, getting it on an, in Unreal 5 and also um, updating it a little bit further. So this is where I ended up actually getting us to. Uh, I think I'm in my cinematic actor, so I'm going to switch to my perspective here. And you'll see what this is, is several mega scans. I'm just going to zoom out. We're going to go real quick here. Whoop. I'm using one large landscape. These are all mega scan materials and mega scan assets. And then zooming in here. Ooh, that's way too fast. This is the sort of little uh, environment that I set up. I'm going to turn the, the camera speed down again. And uh, I've been enjoying kind of playing with the composition here. Uh, and again, this is just mega scan assets. We can grab these, move these around. Some of these are, are multiple. Some of these have different materials on them that I've swapped. Right, All this is kind of the same thing that we're kind of playing with here. Oh, that's interesting. I'm like selecting something, but not. There we go. And then I set up my cinematic camera actor. I've been thinking about doing a taller shot. I like some of the lights coming through this little pergola section here. I could explore that on a previous character. It didn't really go anywhere. But uh, this is kind of that vibe of where the ruler would be getting. Almost like a portrait or a photograph of them looking over some of their domain in their area. And so I wanted to go to a actor here where we can play around with the lighting. Amazing thing about Unreal Engine is we can select this and we can play with the lighting very freely. I'm going to turn off the snap for the rotation. Uh, but you can get all kinds of awesome light effects, dawn effects, you know, if we wanted to do something that was more from the back or you know, to really capture more of those shadows, that's something we can do, uh, which is pretty cool. So I'm a big fan of how Unreal is dealing with all this kind of stuff. Um, it's just so fast and easy to do. So it's something more graphic, we can do that too. And that was what I was kind of liking about this sort of pergola 
Esque lighting setup. Now, uh, obviously, in the title of the stream, I am also introducing the idea of AI artwork. If you don't know what AI artwork is, there's loads of it online, uh, but you can kind of find places like Disco, Disfu Disco Disfusion, Mid Journey, uh, and several other AI artwork programs that are uh, online and are creating interesting things. Um, now, the interesting thing about AI, I'm going to find my tab where it's actually going right now, is that it uh, creates some interesting elements right and my opinion is that it's kind of cool but there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now that kind of looks the same and so i'm seeing people also and i i'm probably a similar mindset is i don't necessarily feel comfortable taking credit for a piece of artwork if um you know it doesn't really feel like mine and so that's kind of where we're at and at least in my opinion with ai artwork and uh what i i've spent some time over the weekend playing around with some tests this music is so dramatic right now. Oh, that's way too intense. Let's see what this one is. Playing around with some tests on AI artwork, and I just did some of my work, some other artists worked, inspiration from all kinds of work, and just kind of seeing uh, what it could do. So I'm going to open up uh, some of those and show you what we've got going on. One second. So some of these and i'll show you what i was able to do and again most of this is going to be inspired by other people uh so i was able to do some work here that was using and we can probably all find the reference points for these but this was uh, a piece of it. there's several of these so we'll go, we're going to go through all these uh, this is some ai artwork of frazetta so i was using frazetta as a reference point uh, for this and I think I was using Frazetta, and I think I said there was like the prompt. You basically put in a, a text prompt, and I said, you know, there's uh, a gleaming um, knight holding a great sword stands aloft a hill, and you can kind of see where it's trying to get that stuff. Uh, and we'll go through several of these where you can clearly see it's using for a couple Frazetta inspirations, and it's going to go through a couple of those, which is kind of interesting. The problem is, and I think that these are interesting, uh, but they don't really look like anything specific and it would take a, a good amount of work to um, you know resolve these into something that is actually interesting or something that's usable right there's cool shapes in here but none of it is really something that we can use so how can we use this is this something we can use is something we can't use uh, I find it interesting I think it's cool looking but again I don't personally feel comfortable taking this and saying this is my artwork saying you know especially knowing that I use Frazetta as one of the prompts for these pieces of art. Cool stuff. Interesting ideas in their compositions and there. Maybe those are things we can take for reference. And I think that's a, the way that I'm kind of looking at this as AI right now is using it as a reference point uh, for your own artwork or for things like that. And I've seen other artists do similar, uh, you know, style, mood, tone, etc. So I have a bunch of these that I started using. Um, then I uh, will go through a couple more of these. I don't think there's too many more left. I started using other artists and, and seeing what they could create or what the AI would create with those prompts. That's the actual prompt itself. And you can start seeing some transitions in the style. I'm using the same prompts, uh, but I think in this one I was using um, Michelangelo was the last one that I used there. And here I was using Raphael. Uh, as some inspiration so you can see the color palette the style of painting the strokes end up changing when you use these artists and you can create some kind of interesting effects some interesting moments i like in here right like i feel like this could be an interesting crop of a painting or a thumbnail for a painting uh you know something maybe even like this there's there's interesting things in there but as a whole it's kind of a mess similar thing if we could create something kind of interesting in here uh, but as a whole it's a bit of a mess Continuing through these, you're going to see some more of these. I'm going to go through everything of this, but this is uh, Ron Cobb. My internet is a little slow today, so apologies. Ron Cobb. I thought these were actually kind of interesting, which were these where J.C. Leindecker meets Mobius in a Thunderdome arena and a cyborg sacrifice. I think those are the words I used. So you kind of get these weird fever dream like experiments but i think there's something interesting in these but they're not necessarily resolved so the problem that i found out after doing 
a weekend's worth of experiments of this is um, what do you do with them, right? I think that you can uh, pretty quickly run into a situation where uh, this is just a very generic one, and I think this looks like generic stuff that a lot of other people have seen, but uh, more AI artwork, right, which is creating interesting shapes but isn't really of use to us. I could see, you know, parts of this being an inspiration of a reference point. But it's not super clear. Let's see if there's anything in here. Here's some earlier ones that I did. Yeah, they're all kind of good color palettes and some neat framing, some neat inspirations. I've been trying to not use too many of the artists that people are using right now. But, you know, there's something interesting in this. In parts of these framings or these compositions or color palettes. And there's something kind of cool there. So what I ended up doing as an additional test was... You, know, you can see some more of these. Uh, I was trying to do Knights Riding Ostriches Jousting uh, Princess Castle, I think is what I went with shortly after this. Again, fever dream sort of experiments. But I don't find them terribly useful. As far as being able to generate finished artwork, especially artwork that I feel like I could say is completed. There's mine. That's not to say there's not interesting ideas here. You know, or there couldn't be an interesting painting, maybe removing this, with what this thing is in the background. But it would require a lot of work, as it should. You shouldn't be able to make it after 10 minutes of just doing something, of typing in words. Um, so I want to test out some other things. One of the things that I ended up doing was doing my own artwork. So I generated a bunch of artwork based off of my own creations and that was this image so this image that i did uh last character i did was the ruler uh, sorry the magician and so the magician this is all done in unreal 5 uh, and i did some interesting things there uh and what i ended up doing was running some i put in my own image and i ran the prompt over my own image instead of doing it uh by just itself and so you can see what it did. I load these all into Photoshop, so we'll see them in a second. I also did this on a secondary painting, which I have not downloaded yet, so I'll download all these now. And we'll check them out, and we'll see what uh, this kind of looked like. And uh, spoiler alert, I'm also doing it right now on a the image, a screen grab of this that we're working on now. And I figured this could be an interesting way to see if maybe we can get ideas, inspiration, etc., off of sort of a work in progress uh, piece of art that we wanted to continue working from. I think I like it kind of like this. I want to see that top a little bit more. All right, so let's hide this. Uh, these are the images that I put in so you can see some stuff here. I'm going to just download this real quick because this is the one that I used. And then I'm going to go into uh, pull my Google Drive off of this window and we're going to load up Photoshop and we're going to boot up some of these other things that I just downloaded. See a couple people joining the stream here. Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. A little under the weather, so apologies for the voice. So this is the second image that I also did some AI prompts on. So let's see what that looks like. These are going to be a little small because they generate um, tinier than the actual image. So they're going to be a little pixelated when I scale them up. All right, first let's look at these. So again, this is the image. And then I'll show you, this is the one that I'm also currently doing some AI generation on. We'll see what happens out of that. Hi everybody, welcome for welcome to the stream. All right, so this is the one we started last time. Uh, I'm gonna go just kind of full screen and make it a little larger and then I'm gonna add my thing over here so you can see a little bit more. 
So this is the raw image. And then we'll start adding. These are some of the different AI things that it was doing to my own artwork. I was using a couple artists. Uh, this one I think was like Giger. Um, you know, to, or words like dragon, demon, things like that. And letting it do its own thing. Hell, fire. And, and seeing kind of what it would do to the work. What I like about this as compared to the previous stuff that I was kind of showing is there's still sort of the fever dream element to it, but the composition and the character generally are there. So I did like nine of these. I'll go through these real quick, but here's one. Here's another. You can see they're similar, but there's still different ideas with inside of the idea. Uh, sort of another one. I like kind of like this one. How it's like tearing it. I also like some of what it's trying to introduce into this fire. It's adding a lot more character than what the base fire was. So you can see that it's kind of doing similar shapes over time. Like this is kind of an interesting one. I like how this one was, was bringing in these sort of skeletal demon bat wings, which is kind of cool. And a bunch of these other things here. So I've been quickly, I didn't get to anything really resolved, but I'll show you what I ended up doing. Which is I started trying to basically combine that, uh, taking small elements of what I had before and starting to introduce it. Right now it's just using masks, but no painting on top. And starting to add the elements of the AI of stuff that I did like into my piece. So these, the clouds over here I thought were interesting. Um, the character of some of the fire I thought was far more interesting than what I had. Uh, I like what it, it did, did it actually um, totally destroy the type, which I thought was kind of cool. It turned it into like a rune. Um, and there's some elements in here that I like. I'm not done with this. I think that they're, I'm going to play around with this idea just a little bit more. But just to kind of give you some insight into how I'm thinking about what this could be used for or if it can be used for. There's something kind of interesting here uh, where it is building on top of itself. You know, even just like, for example, uh, I don't. You know, taking parts of this you know we can start chopping things I'm just hiding some masks here but we could keep parts of this and other parts of it could go away like I even kind of like that you know maybe we um, come back in with this hide this again delete the mask invert the mask and start painting on top Missed the first part. Which AI program is this? I'm using Disco Diffusion mostly because it was easy and free and uh, there was no beta to have to contend with. So Disco Diffusion is what I'm using for this. And I kind of want to add like another mask to this. But I think that there's some interesting things in here. I don't know if it's necessarily something I'm going to use uh, forever. You know? But like I kind of like some of these shapes. I kind of like how it's tying in some of this stuff. And I'm also bringing in the other AI elements on top. So it's not like it's just the one thing. Now I do I am missing some of my original elements. And that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. Is how I can bring those uh, back in. You know, so maybe I am going to call back in parts of the face and remove that and bring back that horn, you know. There's something in here which I think is kind of interesting. And I also, we did this last stream and I wanted to play it around with it one more time. Uh, is I, I purchased a pretty interesting filter. We'll see if it does something cool or not. Maybe it'll look like garbage, but we'll see. Uh, which is... I think it's somewhere in my other palette. There it is. Let's apply this effect to this. This is a very paint effect. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to run through the whole process. It's going to make all kinds of interesting shapes and stuff for us. And uh, we'll do that. While it's doing that, one of the things I've also been enjoying about this AI experiment uh, and doing you know things that take a little bit of time is I don't have to be working on them uh, actively. So... Uh, I'm going to go back to our Disco Diffusion, and I'll show you how it works in case somebody have, has not seen it. Uh, basically, there is a piece of code. This is that 
um, artwork that I initially uploaded. It's going through phases. It's going through 125 phases right now. And you can play with the settings here. And I'll show you the prompt that I chose. I set a beautiful sunny landscape behind an elegant ruler matte painting art station. Uh, I don't like putting art station in here as a fundamental idea. Uh, but what it's actually doing is it just looks at the quality of, of the artwork and pulls references from this place. So it's not necessarily um, going to ArtStation to take like one person's art, but it's basically saying, let's take the, the quality of the general artwork that you see on the site and uh, adds that to the, the pieces. And generally, for some reason, uh, if you put this in the prompt in Disco Disfusion, uh, it will make the artwork look better which is really odd. How to get Nomad hoodies and t-shirts. You gotta go to the school store. School store. So I'm doing this. Uh, I'm telling it uh, to run 250 passes, meaning it's gonna do 250 steps and every time it's gonna evolve it up. This is the size of the image that I'm doing, which is about roughly half the size of the image I started with, uh, just cause it takes some time. I am skipping half, if, if, there's, if it's doing, excuse me, if it's doing 250 steps, I'm telling it to skip 125 of those. The reason is if I don't tell it to skip those, what it actually does is it starts with basically noise and tries to pick something out of the noise and uses the prompt to create image for imagery. Just like I showed you in the earlier ones that kind of have that fever dream quality to them, which is a little uh, interesting, as we were saying earlier, but doesn't necessarily result in something that we feel like is useful, right? So if I kind of go back to uh, this, there's some interesting things in here, but it's it's totally uh, nonsense when it comes to the actual artwork itself, right? Uh, that's because it's starting from nothing. Here, I'm telling it to start with um, an image. So I've actually uploaded my image. And again, the image that I uploaded, uh, I'll show you one second, is right here. So this is the image that I've uploaded. And so when I come down to here, you'll see that the image uh, that it's working off, right on the left hand side, it's taking and it's taking the words that I took, which was matte painting, beautiful sunny landscape, all that fun stuff. But you can see that it is keeping the um, elements there in play. And I think that as I'm watching this, it's not exactly what I had in mind and a lot of that I will probably change, but it is doing something kind of interesting based off of what I want. Now, I'll say from my experience so far, um, it is really terrible, like really, really terrible at doing characters. Uh, every time I put in any prompt that would involve any type of a character, uh, you get really, really creepy and weird uh, things. I don't know why it just does. These are good examples down here. This you can see there's like a, a humanoid face in here, which is really creepy and terrifying. Um, I, this is like some version of a face, which is also terrifying. And like this one here also has captured the essence of some sort of a human, but it's also really creepy. Um, it doesn't do characters well at all. Uh, it doesn't do characters at well at all, and it will destroy them so as we're kind of seeing even though this was a character kind of in the center it's basically turned that into some sort of a temple which is actually kind of cool i kind of like the temple idea right right and that's kind of why we're running this is to see what it's doing but what i'm liking is seeing all this moss and all this stuff that's interesting it's taking these open holes this kind of uh, area here where there's this um rock in front of some stairs and it's turned it into this interesting kind of temple with these Overlook this there's, there's ideas here that are cool and I like that so again going back into Photoshop It looks like we've completed our, our painting test, which I wanted to try um, We'll open all these up and you can kind of see what these are doing I think that there's a world in which I could start combining many of these things If I paint in here I can reveal some detail So this is AI artwork now combined with put this on top of this some more filters and just some ideas of getting something interesting. I, 
Jared, what's up, sir? Yeah, you see it as a tool for ide ideation versus an artist replacement tool for now. Yes, I agree. And that's kind of what I'm playing around with here is how could I use it to inspire my own work? Meaning, you know, from before, this is what it was before. I did nine, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, nine passes. I'm putting it on top. I'm going to keep some of these ideas. And then maybe I run a couple fancy filters on it and see if it gets me anything interesting. And I think there is some interesting elements here that could be painted over and really, you know, nicely finessed to get to a point where uh, you get something that's maybe not necessarily this exactly what I wanted before, uh, but it is different and it does have uh, a similar flavor to what was there. Uh, it's been a fun experiment to play around with. So again, before and after. Maybe a little heavy-handed on what I've done, and I could probably trim out some of this, but I do like some of the shapes and the ideas and the things that it's bringing into this, especially if I don't need it to be super resolved, which is kind of cool. So let's go into this one. This is one that I ran that I haven't even looked at, and so we can kind of take a look at this. Um, so again, my own artwork... Uh, this is the initial piece. You'll notice that it immediately destroyed the character on almost every one of these passes. The character becomes some demon smoke thing. It doesn't even acknowledge what this, what is this. And I could have dialed this down by saying uh, keep more of the source image, but I, I decided to not do that. So, adding here's just we'll just toggle some of these on. Like, this is kind of an interesting... I love, actually, some of what it's doing over here. Like, this this stuff that it's doing to these little uh, branches, which I thought were interesting to begin with. Um, but now that there's this sort of, like, wispy smoke quality to them in some of these, I'm actually kind of enjoying that more. Like, this one's kind of nice because it's not so heavy-handed. So what I'm going to do, like I kind of like that smoke, which is kind of an interesting shape. I think it was this one. There's the original. I like this I like. So I'm going to make a mask for this. We'll just see how this works. And we'll get rid of everything over here. So before and after. And I could probably remove, you know, this bit of the house. So now we've got a more, to me, a more interesting background. And also a more kind of painterly background, which I'm a fan of. Now on this side, let's start over here. Let's try to get like this going. Is there anything interesting in the fire? Like I think personally the fire that I made was subpar and I'm enjoying the character of what it's doing here. I kind of like how this there's like this gesture of the fire like coming into this. I like this one. I don't like this one. No. Mm. No. No, I think I like this one the most. What if we try just some different ideas too? using it as a different blending mode. These are going to be a little heavy, especially in the multiply color burn sides. It's still kind of interesting, though. Overlay is the one I was looking for. This is kind of interesting. I wonder if I dialed this down. All right, I'm going to duplicate this real quick. I'm going to make... Not this one, this one. I'm going to make this back to normal. We're going to keep this fire. We're going to make a mask. I 
all I want on this is just the fire on the left. Just because I think it's more interesting. And that can lose the feet. I don't need to have that little toes sticking out so much. That can be covered up. Get some atmosphere in there. This is where it starts to get into a little weirdness. I'm going to try to keep... I did do okay keeping that hand. I'm losing it a little much, but I'm going to try to keep it the best I can. This is honestly the first time I've ever really tried to use this as a tool, so it's kind of fun. And when we get some stuff done in a little bit, uh, we, we've been generating a couple other versions on our ruler. We'll see what happens with that. So we have before, after, and before. And I think that there's pluses and minuses to this, but generally I'm feeling pretty good about it. I wish that I could just go half a step in. I'm going to zoom in. Because this is not a panel, is it? That's what I want. There we go. Yeah, I just like the energy more of this. It's also adding, because nothing is as sharp, these are such sharp lines over here. It's not adding, uh, it's actually helping me, in, in my opinion, create a more, f this becomes more of a focal point. Now this was the one that I, maybe not this one because it's such an intense thing, but I was playing around with like this sort of weird demon coming out of the background. Uh, let's turn something into overlay layers. So that's an interesting one. This is kind of cool. Just trying to avoid too much swirling in the background. This one has an interesting swirl. Let's try overlay. A little heavy. Is it just going to look like I'm ghosting images on itself? Yeah, kind of. That is kind of what it looks like. So original image that we created to this. I'm kind of liking that, to be honest. Let's see if there's anything like this. There's, there's something interesting here. With like the staff. What's doing here. Well, I like to color if it's overlay. I like to color it as a purple layer or violet. Just so I know. Just kind of punching it up. This lets uh, make a mask. Invert the mask. And then we'll use a, a textured brush. So even just that, you know, getting a slightly different look. And I think I'm already getting a slightly different look from what it was. was maybe we'll get in a little bit more of this it's got some more interest whereas this is just a basic tube you know I can add just that little section that's kind of more interesting so when I'm using it like this I'm just feeling like I can add kind of just texture like I don't want to be like goodbye character I don't think that's the way to use this if we're going to use it at all is there anything interesting in here
because it does just completely destroy the character. And I'm sure I could do some passes if I wanted to. That would be... Um, kind of like these feet. Or what were feet. Some passes that would be more about... Um, definitely destroyed those feet, though. Keeping the original image, and I think that would be useful. Kind of like these ones. Save this real quick as a PSD. We can put it on the de desktop for now. So we've got this one, and we've got this one. This is after using that filter. I kind of like the filter. It just adds a lot of chaoticness to it. I've definitely lost this dude's hand, though. I would like to get his other hand back. So let's turn those off. Turn all these off. And figure it there. Well, there it was. It was long, long ago that we lost the hand. Just completely decimated it. I think I was using this brush. So a little messy, a little muddy, definitely not as defined or refined as it was. I could spend a lot of time painting over this, and I probably should. I'm going to do this. Just trying to get back some of the original shape. You see how messy it, it's really kind of feels difficult to control, to be honest. Like it feels like you're kind of wielding so much noise and stuff. But I've also never been somebody who is crazy good at like photo bashing. So if you're a photo basher and this is like the way you do work, you may excel at this. Let's just do this one more time. this and we'll apply that while that's doing its thing again we're going to do this to all of them so we kind of have a little bit of a uh, a group for the stream today oh, apparently my video disappeared got to embrace the noise yeah that's true if, i think if there's gonna be noise i think it, it's you gotta like really go everywhere on it but the challenge that i'm finding is the original source that i created doesn't have noise so what I do there, I guess I add it, 
I, I, you know, I got to figure out what I, what I would do with that. So speaking of, let's go back to what we've been doing. This is a couple of what these been working on. It looks like um, it made one of the, the character that was in the center a tree. So that's nice. But it's already made us four of these. So let's just, uh, I'll just download these individually. It's just easier. Otherwise, it sends me a zip, and then I have to unzip the zip, and you know how it is. We've all been here. So this is what it's kind of doing. I'm going to stop it here in a little bit. Don't really need to see that. But we're going to go in here. Looks like it's completed that, which is great. Thank you. We're going to do that again on this one. Thank you. Looks like it's actually going to lock up the computer for a minute. But that's fine. We'll let it just do its thing. Uh, hopefully everybody out there is doing well. Um, this has been kind of a fun experiment, experiment to do. It's been nice to uh, explore the uh, AI stuff and just kind of see what's going on. There's so, so many posts about it recently, especially in the past week or two is where I've really seen them explode. It's been around for you know, several months now, but um, this is the first time I've really seen it become like... everywhere. I think my feed is just absolutely full of it all the time. There we go. Now we got this one. Close that for now. And while that is almost done, we'll go check that out in a sec. Let's check it out now before we get sidetracked. So we have this one and this one. I like this filter. It's kind of interesting. I don't like it though. Not on this. Yeah, no thank you. So we've got this one with some noise in there. Without spending too much more time on it though, I'll be honest, I think I like this version more. Apparently V removes my video, so I keep doing that. Uh, I think I like this version more. And I don't feel like it's, for me, you know, I, I will stu still continue to do some work on this, but I feel like it isn't so far off from what I wanted that I feel like I can't, you know, claim too much ownership of it either. And this is probably the same. Meaning if I group this. I like some of the stuff I had in the back. And I'm sure I could bring that back, you know. Like maybe we make a mask for this. You know, we could bring back in subtly some of these little things that were here. to add some more of that texture maybe. But I think generally I actually prefer it this way. So I'm kind of happy with this one. Emmanuel, what's up, sir? Hope you're doing well. So I'm finding it to be useful, but I'm using it in, you know, I think a bit more subtle and using it on my own work, and I'm finding it to be useful, but I'm still playing with this, and I haven't spent, you know, frankly, enough time on any of these pieces to really um, utilize it to its full extent. So this is the one that we did as we've been playing on it, right? Let's put the, the AI work in here. And let's see what, if there's anything in here that we think is interesting. Apparently, I sized it the wrong dimensions. That's fine. This isn't the most perfect thing ever. Let's 
Yeah, let's fit this to the screen. So, uh, going kind of a little quick recap. This is where we are in Unreal. I don't know why my lighting all went away, but it did. Oh, that's because I think I'm in... There we go. This is where we are in Unreal. This is the scene that we were exploring. Work in progress. While working on this, I decided to take a quick snapshot. Kind of like this right here. Took a screen grab, put it into Disco, and we did a prompt, which was matte painting, a beautiful sunny landscape, and a ruler overseeing their domain or something like that. And we got a couple things. So this is, the, again, the source. Now this is where I'm like, eh, you've definitely drifted quite a ways. And a lot of these shapes are not really usable. They're cool. They're not super, super usable. This is like clearly taking somebody else's matte painting because I think I typed the word matte painting so it, it is searching the internet for matte paintings and it's going to start adding them in so it's kind of I like some of what it did I don't like a lot of what it did so let's just try bringing in some stuff with masks let's start with the ground plane let's start with like this front area Probably this one. Or that one. Like this one. Let's see if this is even usable. You have to be really careful with this, because, like, again, if I over, if I go over the character pretty much at all, uh, it will destroy it. And this is where I, I to be honest, I'm, I'm curious what people think in the chat. I'd love to hear opinions. Uh, this is where I personally get kind of conflicted about how I feel about AI artwork. I want to change the image that I gave it. Do a couple more. I want to use one that's like kind of further back. And conflicted in the way of I'm using it right now on my own artwork to generate ideas. Right? And if I keep those ideas, because I see a lot of, you know, debates online. If I keep those ideas, if I change it to the point where it's no longer the same, or I'm using those, is that, what's the right word, ethical? I don't know if that's the right word, but is that cool or not? Uh, let's go here. I'm going to put that new image in. Just put it in my Google Drive. It's now going to see it. So I can come in here to my Google Drive. I'll see it appeared. Copy the file path. I'm going to go into my prompt area. I'm going to tell it you're starting with this image. And then I'm going to say go. It's going to go through all these steps and it's going to do its thing. And we will see some in a little bit. But in the meantime, we'll continue over here. So is it like, um, sorry, what a, a am I using? Uh, I am using uh, Disco Diffusion right now. Rob says, you, you kind of feel like it's similar to Kitbash parts. It's, it is using other people's work, right. 
Exactly. Uh, just like you would when you look at things for inspiration. True, but it's generating actual pixels, which is the weird... That's where I feel kind of odd about it. Like, this, I would love, you know, if this was generating crazy high res, which it can, um, I think there's something interesting potentially to that, but I actually like this one more now. So let's add a mask. It is doing what you're saying, Rob, where it is... Um, using other people's artwork just as you would you know with many other things but that's again why I kind of feel weird about it is like I like this stuff actually more than what I have here so if I start coming in and taking these pieces Is it any different, I guess, the, than, you know, me using Megascan assets? Let's see, what's, what are some of these things that are interesting? I'm going to duplicate all these so I can have them without masks. So, like, what's some, I don't like this. Obviously, it's taking some work from people. This is kind of cool, though. I would probably take like these. I'll delete that mask. I guess I already have one with that, huh? Ethically, if it's your own work, you're you're basing the A off. It's fine. It's using other artists where it feels wrong. Okay, that's a good point. Let's do the test then. I'm gonna ask. I'm very curious as we're all kind of chatting about this and. I'm, we got another hour to talk about it. I'm going to generate an image or two, so we'll see uh, what we think. Let me just stop you there and say, what if I did this? Right now, it's generating matte paintings. It's going to make something interesting. That's going to be kind of cool, I think. Right, I don't know what this is going to make, but I think it's going to be interesting. I'm going to let it finish. I'm not going to let it finish because I'm a liar. What if I did this? Settings, matte painting, James Howell. If you don't know who James Howell is, he's an amazing painter. Just to show everybody the work that we're looking at, or will be looking at. I might be spelling the name wrong, which would be different too. There we go. No, I, I'm looking for somebody different. If I typed somebody very specific, right? One I used earlier, I'm a big D&D uh, &D fan, was uh, Larry Elmore. So if I came in and said, let's make it look like this, let's use this person as one of the prompts, even though it is on top of my artwork, I'll show you. Let's do it. Larry Elmore has beautiful work. You know, we could also do some of the other other um, D and D artists, Jeff Easley. Let's do Jeff Easley. I love Jeff Easley. So let's come in here, and we're going to say instead, James Howe. Let's do Jeff Easley. Okay, and we're going to do. I we saw kind of what it looked like when I didn't use that. John Howe, thank you so much. I'm like, I'm, I know I'm, <laughs> it's a wrong word. There it is. I was looking for it the other day. John Howe, this is some of his amazing work. So let's actually do this. Let's try it on stream. We'll do a couple. So I'm going to run this. It's doing its thing. We're going to do Jeff Easley as one. 
And this is where the ethical part of it comes down to me, and this is where I genuinely feel conflicted, because if I can go in and type, you know, make something specific, Jesus, this music is so fucking intense. We gotta get some lo-fi on right here. I just can't hang right now. This is the image it's gonna start with. Right now, right now that might be not enough. So I'll show you what you can do. I'm gonna stop it. And I'm gonna say, stop one more time. There's a way to stop it that's not this, but I'll show you. So I'm gonna say, maybe st skip a couple more steps, 150. So it's gonna keep more of the original image. John Howe, we are also doing Jeff Easley. We'll do JC Lion Decker today. And then we'll do anybody got a suggestion for another artist we should put in as a prompt and we'll see how it goes. Cause this is beautiful. This is stunning work. And it is gonna source their paintings. Like I had said earlier, I'll show you. Uh, I did just some random early tests and this is a Larry Elmore painting that I had it make. You see that the inspiration is there, and that was without any prompts, without anything on top of my work, right? But there is something odd. You know, this is Frazetta, using Frazetta as an inspiration point. This I don't feel good about. Not that I did it. I think it's an interesting process. I'm never going to keep say these are my work right I think there's some interesting ideas in here but it's not um, I would never say this is my work even if I came in here and you know painted on the face and cleaned all this up so these are people rather than little things or you know maybe if I just cropped in here and kept this section right there's something there but I, I don't like what it's doing because it's like, it feels like it's too much. All right, so we let it keep some of the stuff. It's going to do 100 passes using Jeff Easley, along with a beautiful sunny landscape behind an elegant ruler, matte painting. So it's going to search matte paintings and search art station. And we'll see what this turns into in probably 15 minutes. And then we'll do John, and then we'll do JC, and if I'm, anybody else has any other suggestions, we'll put them in here and we'll do them as the next one. While we're doing that, let's jump over here. And let's keep some of this. I have no idea what's underneath this, but I like that it's kind of pulling in some little green here. What is it doing to this backdrop? It's pretty appealing, whatever it is. Are these other ones more interesting? Actually, yes. That's way more interesting. It's kind of funny to see what it turned them all into. This one was like a stone um, thing way in the distance, which I thought was actually kind of fun. This is like a thing. This one's a tree.
is without any color on the character too. Like I think if I would have gone in and done some more, that would have been more interesting. Do I like any of these stairways? Not really, because it kind of really turned the scale upside down. They're cool for sure. I'm not saying they're not cool. But I could, you know. What happens if I just try that? I think it's getting somewhere interesting for how little I did. Like, I think, obviously I could come in and I could do another character. And maybe this is an idea. Let's do this real quick. Okay. Let's get, let's get crazy, y'all. Camera's way too fast. Down, down, oh, there we go. We could also have it do it to just this. Let me place the wrong image, but that's okay. Don't get me wrong, I love the 3D part of it. I'm just finding it interesting that it's, you know, we could take something and start combining it. I mean, it's, this is before, this is my Unreal screenshot. This is after. Low res, this is not a huge image. I think there's actually, I scaled all those images up. But there's nothing in here where I'm like, I really like this other part more. So I can delete all these. So is there a significant change? Yeah, I, yeah, I think there's a lot of change there. But it's generally the same composition. And like, if I were to have chosen different types of rocks or something like that, that's fine. Like, I would have happily chosen different types of rocks. The things I am missing is the structure. And that's the big problem, I think, right? Like, this. All these shadows coming in. And maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Let's try something. We're getting crazy today. Let's just pick some of these. And let's make a mask for that. And let's uh, put it on multiply. And uh, let's remove let's not do the mask let's just copy it copy paste hide this layer uh, let's put it on multiply and then let's filter blur Gaussian blur just a little bit just not so crispy And then I guess this could be my shadow layer, so we'll make it uh, gray. Gray can be the shadow layer. Um, let's turn it back to normal. We'll color pick it.
So it's kind of an experiment today. I don't know if this is where we'll actually go with it, but it is what it is. Yeah, Rob prefers mostly the before. Uh, this is definitely a mix of photo bash for anybody who's uh, joining now and watching. We are trying, experimenting with the you know, the new fad at the moment. Which is AI artwork. Or using AI in your artwork. So this was the original. Which is not that different, generally. This is adding some details to it, adding and enhancing some elements to it. And maybe even if we just, like, let's, you know, what was I doing before? Copy, paste. We're getting another one after this in a second. Window. Get that other filter that I like. And let's filterize this bad boy. While that's doing its thing, we can always jump back into Unreal. I'll show everybody where we're at there. So this is where we're at. Obviously, you know, if you want to do some cool, more intense artwork, you know, that you're not just doing images, AI is not really going to get you there. But this is a cool place to get started. It's interesting, right? I find it interesting. Where I'm... I, I don't, f and the reason I think it's interesting and the re reason I'm spending, you know, more time on it is that um, I don't think it's going to go away. You know, I don't think it's going to go away. That's the thing. I think it's going to get better. I mean, technology improves, things improve. So for the concept art crowd, I don't think it's going to go away. I just don't. I do think people are already getting tired of it, though. I think a lot of people, myself included, can see it's a piece of AR, AI artwork within, you know, two seconds of looking at a piece. Regardless of how cool it is, you can tell that there's uh, elements, meaning many or none, or several, that are there. Um... You know, that, that feel a, like they're from AI. But I don't know if it's going to go away. Do we have any of these already out? Oh, we do. Okay, we don't need that. We said we would do Jeff Easley one. We said we'd do John Howe. So we're going to stop this one from going. And this is kind of the question that I have for people, right? We're going to go through a couple pretty famous illustrators here, and uh, we're going to go back into Photoshop. Thank you. We'll play with this in a second. play with that in a minute just join what's going on hey we are creating we started creating a character in ZBrush it's been a stream or two making a character we're gonna continue working on that in a second then we jumped into Unreal we've created a scene for them and then today we're doing some experimental work and we are trying some AI generation on top of the image and we're kind of going through a moral and ethical debate right now <laughs> uh, as to whether or not you should use existing artists in your prompts, if you should use AI on your work at all or not, and all that fun stuff. Right now, the character's been kind of destroyed because that tends to be what AI seems to like to do, but uh, it is kind of cool. So let's get... This can be closed. Let's get this in here. So this was the previous base. This is where we got to. And um, I'm gonna do some filter work in a sec. So this is the first image, I'm sorry, 
we'll do we'll just look at the bases the first base the second base you see slightly different in its you know composition but generally the same subject matter I wanted to see what it would do with more of this stuff on top and more of the sides of this generally I find that it completely takes it in a, another direction and I don't tend to like it uh, question so am I using existing painting artwork and applying their style to your scene is that Photoshop that you can do whatever code gotcha good question so um, I am using AI in this right now that is this the AI is in some of the previous ones and these ones that we pulled I'll show you what they look like without anything they had basically taken this initial image and turned it into this with a prompt of saying a beautiful sunny landscape with a ruler standing an elegant ruler I think is what I said I also added the words matte painting and art station that's what I got to get this, to get this, and to get this. It completely destroyed the staircase. It completely destroyed the character. But it did add some cool elements. So I kept some of those and f more or less photo bashed them into where it is now. Right? And then I did a filter on top. We'll fix that in a minute, though. Actually, I can't because I closed that scene. So I'll have to do that again. But that's fine. Uh, this is the one that we just loaded up. And I'm going to grab what it gave us. Which was this one. So what we're actually creating the images in is something called Disco Diffusion. This is AI. There's tons of these you can find online. AI, uh, Disco Diffusion being one of the big ones. Um, Mid Journey being another one that's very common right now as well. And... This time we're doing a test, and this is the ethical question, which is we're putting in a couple, or one, in each of these um, artist names. So the first one we used was Jeff Easley. Now we're doing John Howe. And then we'll do J.C. Leindecker. And then if anybody else, else has suggestions, Rob, you had a suggestion of Matt Groening. That's an interesting idea. I had done Mobius as well, uh, which got some interesting ideas as, out there. So we're pulling you know, this artwork for the for one first we started with this one then we're doing this one then we'll do this one and then we'll do another one uh, you can also combine and do many of them uh, but let's go ahead and back into Photoshop go into our downloads folder and toss this in there again slightly smaller I actually don't really want to get them all in just yet because I want to size them at the same but we'll go ahead and take a look at it which if we look at it here so it took some kind of interesting liberties with all this stuff. It kept this in in shockingly good form. Uh, that's because I told it to, though. MC Escher would be weird. It doesn't really um, take in... I don't think it really takes into account the perspective and the form and the language I don't know if it's really capable of doing that uh, but what it is really good at is capturing their style so we'll put this on there in a little bit and see what we can do kind of interesting though right I think you know regardless of what we're uh, all doing with this kind of stuff and how we feel about it it's definitely something that has captured you know the people at the moment right, I'm going to put this in one more I'm going to do that filter again because I accidentally closed the file while well, it does its thing and I don't know how I feel about this I don't know if this is what I'll use or not I do want to do some versions on this as well You know, you'd never be able to do a turntable around it. I say that now, but I should bite my tongue, or otherwise Skynet will hear, will hear me. Right? You know, you never be able to play with the light in the same way that you can if you're doing it in 3D or whatever. 
but I found this really, really useful. I did notice, by the way, that um, Quixel got some really huge, called gargantuan, I think is what it was called, gigantic, huge, massive tundra terrain. I loaded these in, so I'll show you. I'm going to zoom out a quick, real quick while it's it's doing its own little thing. And it made this really large, the substance, or Quixel or whoever, created this really interesting one, right, with all these kind of pools of water and stuff, and that's what I'm using right now, uh, which I could pretty easily, you know, say, hey, we're going to do it in the swamp section and see if we get something different from that. kind of cool too uh, but they got these really huge so this is uh, the terrain that we're using here so you see it's pretty large when I drag it in check out this thing though look at this thing huge absolutely huge I was going to use it but I couldn't really find a use for it and I guess if it's that far in the background I can keep it genuinely there I do want to add some fog I don't want you to destroy my scene, but I do want you to be in the scene. So let's cooperate. There we go. Yeah, but pretty amazing. Alex Ross. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, Carvaccio. Pretty interesting, right? I don't know. I think there's something here. But I'm not entirely sure. Need horse. Hello, sir. Hope you're doing well. Ash high, drop the sun, add fog, Blade Runner. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. I mean, that's shockingly easy to do. <laughs> Just the weird thing. Uh, where's my fog? Hype fog. Let me probably just create a new one. I think you can go create effects, exponential height fog, drag that into your scene. Voila, fog. Fog density. Let's get it a little lower. Let's get that directional light. Rob, are you using uh, Unreal much? Have you using? I've tried using this with frames from films. I have not. That's an interesting idea, though. I like that quite a bit. There we go. That's that. That's that color palette we're talking about. I actually like the other sun and sky more. You keep wanting to learn it. You, I think if you learned it, you would love it. Definitely check it out. And it's not really that hard. Just so fast. It's so stupidly fast. So you can do all this kind of fun stuff. There's a better um, sky that I like to use, but let me see if I can find it. I'll just drag it in here. You picked it up? Jared, I didn't know you picked it up. But this fucking sky, this thing is so huge. You know, and then we get some we get some distance shots of this place. This weird gazebo. Materials are awful though. <laughs> <laughs> the materials are a little rough. I'm not going to lie. It's been hard. Have you tried it with your own art? Yes, actually. That's kind of what we're talking about today. Um, let me just copy over something really quick. Which I prefer. Uh, I'm going to open up these files. Ruler... 
Unreal Ruler. I'm going to open this in a new window. So this is like my content for the ruler scene. And I think I was using it in, I know I was using it in the Sage. So Unreal, Sage, Content, Third Person Sky. If I just drag this folder, I think this is how it works, or can work. Excuse me. Third Person, uh, Ultra Dynamic Sky. I think we just drag this in here. Copy it, paste it. It's going to take a minute, apparently. You can also migrate this. You can, you know, there's other ways to do it. As in the art station art. You like, I like the interface, actually. I think once I got used to it, I was pretty cool with it. All right, is it in there now? Okay. So it should be in there. It should be in here. Let's see. Let's uh, go to our window environment light mixer. I think it's these. I'm just going to delete our lights. And we'll start over with the lighting. And I'll delete our fog. So let's kill the directional light, the fog, the sky atmosphere, and the sky light. And I'll also kill the volumetric cloud. So all you have to do is if you go into this window, environment light mixer, all you have to do to start up is literally just go boom, 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 boom. You can hit that one too. Uh, and it'll create lights for you. If you go from minimal to normal, it'll give you a bunch more uh, you know, stuff. And then under your skylight, if you hit real-time capture, and then usually if you just select the light, this is how I started. I'm going to switch to a new one in a sec, but uh, if you start adjusting it, it'll get a little bit better. I feel like it needs a moment to catch up. But that's a way you just get started with lighting in a reel from a blank scene. All right, where was I? I had a volumetric fog, too. I'm going to kill. Instead of that, though, I'm going to go into my thing here, the ultra dynamic sky. I want my blueprints. I may have imported it incorrectly. I just want this one and this one. I'm going to drag them in and see if it works. Yeah, there is something slightly off. I agree with you. I think I may have just crashed my scene. Oh, there it is. Put them in. Let's actually select these. And now it's raining. And it's raining. What I like about this is um, I go to the weather. I'm going to select a preset. This is how stupid this is. Preset, clear skies, partially cloudy, cloudy, all of these things. So dumb. Partially cloudy is what I wanted. Uh, then I'll select my light. And what I like about this one more is that the lighting to me has a time of day slider uh, rather than like the, you can use the dial or the, the gizmo. But when it gets to nighttime, it has an actual nighttime um, thing. And you can see like the moon and the stars, and you can control the moon and the stars. A lot of clouds, but. And they're also volumetric clouds, so they move, which I like uh, more than the, the default ones. And the I find that personally the sunsets. Like we were talking about that Blade Runner vibe. You get a lot more of that vibe from this quick setup. I think I was going like this direction. When you can play with all this stuff, it's super easy. But it's just one light, which is cool. And then, of course, you can get in some fog. Yeah, it's one of the best add-ons. That Ultra Sky is amazing. And obviously, you can come in here. I love the weather aspect of it. You know, if you want to come in with your, with your snows, you can. Uh, I think if I play, let's see if I fall through the level. 
I fall through the level. If you create um, geometry for it to work on, it will also uh, add thickness to the snows and stuff. And let you run through it and stuff, which is pretty rad. So I'm a big fan of that one. But anyways, this one is probably done. Did it complete one? It's got to be close if it's not. Yeah, it's at 80%. We might run out of time on this one. So what I'm going to do for the next one is do the character. We'll do it smaller. It should be creating. What it also does is it creates partials. Partials are, it creates snapshots along the way. So I can tell from here what it's going to look like, and you'll see what it's actually starting with. So it started, it created it, you know, at zero percent, and then it started leveling it up from this element. So same thing with like this. This was the first one. And then it restarted. And you can see it. Oh, it created something. That looks like John Howe for sure. All right, let's stop this thing. Uh, we said we'd do... Line Decker, but somebody else said... A name that I thought would be interesting. Carvaggio. Let's try that. And then we'll do the character if we have time. While it's doing that, I have so many tabs open, I've lost control of my internet. I've lost control. Let's go back to <laughs> something. Where is it? Having a full on mental lockdown. Great. Uh, download. Download. It did give me something pretty close to final here. 97. 97. I'll take this one too. We'll let it do its next thing. And we'll get that last one whenever it comes out. Let's do it where we snap it. It's not going to be perfect. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. So this is our original, and this was a Jeff Easley, and then this is a John Howe. So you can see it is definitely taking some different inspirations from their works. So you've got some sort of like Elven City, uh, when we were looking at like their names. I, like you can see some of that style is definitely coming through in you know, the shapes that John would make does make those are being referenced and Jeff's are similar this sort of very traditional natural look at that like this this is super being pulled into this so I think there's something interesting here I don't know this is you know kind of what we were talking about the ethical question of using AI in your artwork in general if you're doing you know my opinion 
is that if you're doing fully procedural AI artwork, I, I think you should definitely say that, uh, especially if you're pulling in reference points from other artists. I think that's a, a must. I don't think that there's really, for me, a middle ground of that. But the the question for me as I'm using, you know, doing this one is, what if you're just taking pieces of it and it's still your overall composition and you're not using their names in it? Still kind of weird. I don't know how I feel about it myself. I love what it's doing to this top, but let's start let's start keeping some of this stuff. So, if I want any of it, like this is a really interesting shape. I don't really want it, but I I think it's cool. This is more interesting. Let's just try. Let's just start taking stuff. This one I didn't really like. In the future, how are we going to know if the artist is taking references from another or just using AI? I have no idea, and that's the whole question, I guess. Or that's not really a question. I guess I'm just kind of, like, scared about that potential future, or inevitable future. Added a whole mountain range back there. Who knew? Yeah, like a whole city back here. Look at that. I changed this one into like a straight up city. So it's a city. You've seen the Matrix. Oh no. The newest Matrix? I didn't love it, I'm going to be real with you. So adding some stuff on top. I think there's some cool ideas here, but these were also, you know, taking from easily and uh, John Howe. So, not 100% feeling great about that. Just not. How's this one doing? Probably pretty close. We don't need this. It is cool. This is the Caravaggio one. It doesn't seem wildly different. It's keeping more of the initial shapes, and there's a lot more feeling of, like, drapery in there. But it's cool. So what we'll do is we'll do one last one, as we said we would. We'll take the initial images, and we're going to put this image in there. Uh, keep replace. Don't know if it replaces. All right, so we're going to use this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my properties of the image. I'm going to check out my details. This is going to be the pixel size. This is important for me. 
so that when I, I closed it, right after I say it's important to me, I closed it. Um, I'm going to come in here. We're going to copy this path. We're going to stop it doing what it's doing. We're going to go in here and say use my image. You, this is the pixel dimensions. 1183 by 494. And we will say, let's keep Caravaggio in there. A happy ornate. I say it or spell ornately. Artists are gonna get better at smelling at spe smelling at spelling if they have to use AI. Ruler in beautiful flowing robes. I'm going to remove Carvaggio. Let's put Unreal Engine in there. Let's see what that does. I've heard that does things. Run all. Once this thing is done, we'll continue with it. Yeah, that's possible, right? Broke it into passes. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now is like, I think if you did the um, the character separately, because it will destroy the character. It's, it's actually, and we'll see this very shortly, and I should have maybe done some color on the character first because it's going to be mostly white, which is fine. But it absolutely destroys people. Anything that's humanoid at all is like a, a weird, terrifying nightmare. Um that resembles humans but isn't so I find I find that kind of interesting uh, in what it's you know attempting to do there but it, it is uh, it is a bit intense I'm going to see if I can make this feel like a painting. Maybe, you know, the kind of the combination of efforts maybe with a filter can be kind of tied into something that is a little more clear. It does do a lot better on larger images. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, do you think I could replace artists or some parts of production like concept artists or so? Uh, I don't think fully no because it's not really, a, especially not right now, to take um, direction. It can't be very specific. But if you want, I could see certain directors really enjoying this type of work, to be honest with you, because if you don't want it to be crazy designed, I think that could be a really appealing thing for somebody. 
So this is before and after with some filter work and all that fun stuff. Similar. Uh, before, after. Uh, after, before. I don't know if I like it, but it is something I'm going to play with more. That's what I use, called it. In this one, we have put in some of this stuff. And this we don't need. Let's save this as well. We'll go check in on our robot here. Is it a robot? Oh, we made the dimensions wrong. So that's good to know. Four ninety four, one one eight three. At least we know now. We'll let that do its thing. All right. Thank you, Jeff, John, and spell check. Uh, yeah, there's a couple others that I tried this on. I did it on, um, uh, this piece that I did. So you can see, like, it created some different shapes and more of, like, um, just a couple different things that it did here. And there's part of this that I like. This interesting, weird, you know, mountain spire peak. Uh, the, the texture of what it did to some of the clouds and some of these mountains and, like, the detail in some of those mountains, I think, is kind of interesting. Um, you know, some of what it's doing down here is kind of cool. Part of me just wonders, like, if this is the way that people would use AI in the future, is it different than filters? Is it really that different than filters? And I don't know. Because for years, I've been coming in and doing a couple different types of filters. So for myself, I'll just hide all this stuff. We'll duplicate this and we'll do like a case study. Like, okay, so I used to do things like filter, uh, filter gallery, I think is one, but there's like an old oil paint filter, stylize, oil paint seemingly doesn't work anymore, filter gallery, you know, and I might come in to do uh, artistic, paint jobs is one that I used a lot, see what it does, you know, I might de-sharpen it. Make the brush size quite a bit larger. Obviously it doesn't change the shapes, but I don't know, there's there's a debate to be had there. I'm very curious on what people's thoughts are what of this are. Because I see a potential for it, I for sure see a potential of it. This is the one we're doing now. Kind of the same. We took very similar types of elements. Nothing wildly different. Like things like this. Kit bash. Um, Quixel stuff. Big, medium, small. Know, there's something there. But there is a line, and I don't know where the line is. Like 
just kind of waiting for this last this last um, AI thing to run there we go now like I said it does terrible with faces that needs to be known. That needs to be known that it does just absolutely horrific with, with faces. What we could do now, though, is we could actually just bring this in. We'll keep it there just so we have it. We'll copy, paste. Paste. Right now. So tiny. Maybe they're bigger than that. I don't know. feel more appropriate to the size of the stairs now. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to that before. and put it in the other one after I've done a really bad paint out of the background. Seems like an awesome way to keep you inspired when trying to find a design it does feel like a good way to do that yes to keep you kind of moving on something to keep things progressing I agree video reminds you of a Scott Robertson video using replicators and moto to brainstorm ideas yeah that's I could see that it also reminds me of people using mirrors or people using um, not just mirrors but the mirror app right there was things where you could you know, do stuff like a draw symmetrically put things together I remember Neville Page is doing it uh, with his like a Mac in whatever the, the program is called, but you can like duplicate things. Like every new, new tech or medium, you assume will go through a terrible, ugly, easy to spot art. Then an inflection will happen where it transcends what we originally thought. That's probably true. I agree with you. That will very likely happen. This is the original. We'll pull the other one in here when it's done. Which it should be close, but I like this. Like, look at what it's kind of doing. Who did we use? Any people in this? In our in our prompt. Ornately dressed, elegant ruler in beautiful flowing robes. So no artists being called. Oh, it made this into like a pendant. That's kind of nice. That's like a more of a real hat. What's interesting about what it's doing now is it's taking the lighting into account. I did not expect it to take the lighting into account, so it's actually like shading the head. Stock image headshots. Who should our ruler be? 
pull this pick one real fast. I was going to draw into glasses up here, but this is probably similar, most similar to the face we already have. We're using you. And we're really just counting down until this is done. Oh, it's done. Huzzah! I can tell I went to the Ren pair. Downloads. So this is uh, the original, and this is after. I think there's a lot of stuff that's going on here, which is actually pretty solid. But I love that it's keeping my original design, at least an essence of it, in play. So, so far, this is actually one of the better examples that I've seen for myself. Sorry, I'm trying to fill this with a background color. Just failing all over the place. Let's start adding first. There are elements that I would want to bring in, but I think to begin with, Considering that's what it looked like. Let's just get this in there. I guess I could see this being super useful for costume. I don't really want to do the face right now. I don't have time. I don't have time. We got seven minutes left. Probably don't know. Probably don't focus on the public market side of business. But what's your take on Unity's market cap falling 60% since the November since it's buying Weta assets? I think. Personal opinion is not a Nomen opinion. Uh, I think that uh, Unreal is demolishing them. I think that's probably the biggest reason. They're being absolutely destroyed by Unreal in the public perception. I actually kind of like this. I guess I would like to add the sleeve back so that they have a hand again. already intersecting oddly to begin with though. Let's uh all copy paste hide. Ooh a little star field, that's nice. I'm into that. I'm into that. Put him in this demon image. Oh. Kind 
copied the background like a dummy. that one and we'll just put this one in here as well because we can and we'll just erase this stuff again probably could have just copied the other one again that's okay. Uh, overthrown and turned into white stone. I like that idea already, Ash. Good idea. So there we go. Uh, that's probably going to be it for the stream today. We don't have too much more time. We actually got to close out. But uh, playing around with AI today, right? Creating it on our own artwork, using existing people's work, creating prompts from nothing. Uh, I think there's a, a future in being able to AI enhance our I somehow just disappeared, but I think I'm still. Uh, so hopefully you can all hear me, but we just had a weird glitch with the stream. There we are, I'm back. Um, we're back. All this kind of weird stuff going on with AI, but I'm pretty happy with how this is actually kind of looking uh, from a just overall art standpoint. I think there's some interesting things that could continue to be used here. There we go. Between this and this as our pieces today. But um, I think it's a dangerous path to go down too far because then you're not really doing it yourself. And you're not um, thinking about the ideas beforehand, just letting it do its thing. So interesting stuff, but, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining the stream today. Uh, next week, we will have one more stream on this character, and uh, that will be it. So thank you, everybody, again, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay creative. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.